Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, JoJo, and I am here with something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to have a little discussion about a new show that I am watching on Hulu called Little Fires Everywhere. I don't know if you all are watching it, but if you are not, please log on to your nearest device and get into Hulu. Um, start your free trial, whatever you got to do, and watch the first three episodes. Do not watch this if you have not watched the first three episodes. You need to go ahead and do that today because I think you will enjoy it. Um, I know I'm looking real out of sorts. I'm on a very busy street and I have been holding um, my pee for the last 25 minutes because I just did my uh, Love Goals review. I know this is TMI, but I'm going to be talking kind of fast and I just want to let y'all know why because I really got to go to the bathroom and I know it's not healthy. Y'all ain't got to tell me. I already know. But um, just got done with the side hustle. That's why all of this is in the back. And um, yeah, might be the main hustle in a minute, depending on what's going on. Because, ooh, child, we're living in unpredictable times. But I hope you guys are taking care of yourself and doing well. So, little fires everywhere. So, I think I'm going to review the show every week. Um, the first three episodes have already come on. So, I'm just going to try to give everybody... A brief synopsis and discussion of the first three episodes and I do mean brief so I'm gonna leave out a lot of things and then tomorrow I'm going to do the review for episode four I, I, I can't do it today because I really got to go to the bathroom that's really the only reason why so um, the story is based on a book by Celeste NG I do not know how to pronounce her last name and I don't want to say it wrong um, it's based on a book the book is called Little Fires Everywhere. It was a 2017 bestseller. And it's a discussion of two women, Elena Richardson, who was played by Reese Witherspoon, Mia Warren, who was played by Kerry Washington. Both of them are acting their behinds off, but did we expect anything less? And it is their story of a simmering tension, um, a little bit of race relations sprinkled into there. And it gives me very much Big Little Lies vibes, but there's a lot more added elements to it. But a lot of secrets, a lot of tension, um, a lot of cover-up. So a lot of that is going on within the story. Um, I knew that when I saw that Kerry Washington was in it that I was going to be interested in the show because I really like Kerry Washington for whatever reason. There's just something about her vibe that I just really appreciate now i like I, I like the more thick carrie washington the one that was in i think i love my wife and uh she hates me the spike lee film but i can vibe with little you know real skinny carrie washington too i know she changed up her eating habits and all of that so you know she she healthy and that's it's all good it's all good i like this carrie too but thick carrie washington was my favorite she wasn't thick but y'all know what i'm talking about like a little 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 bit she had a little more meat on her <laughs> when she did those two uh movies but i like this one too so carrie washington is playing mia warren and i'm gonna talk a little bit about both of their characters then i'm gonna talk about some of the other characters and then in between there i'll kind of give you guys we'll talk about what happened in episodes one through three so the story opens up with Elena standing outside of her home and the home is in flames and the police asking her does she know anybody who would do something like this and she's just looking at her house you know her charred house so we don't know who started the fire but we have some ideas and then we move into the beginning of the storyline so Elena played by Reese Witherspoon she's a journalist and I'm gonna be looking at my notes she's a mother of four teenage children um, she's the typical suburban house, well, she's not a housewife, but the typical suburban wife, you know, um, blonde hair, perfect body, perfect children, um, perfect house, perfect husband, perfect job. She does everything perfectly. She cares about her children. She cares about her household. She cares about the environment. Um, her, she throws the best parties. All of her friends love her and maybe even envy her a little bit. Everybody in the neighborhood respects her. So there's this whole vibe that Elena gives off. And it's this pillar of perfection. Mia, by contrast, is a single mother to a daughter named Pearl, who we'll talk about Pearl later. 
Um, in the opening scenes of the show, it appears that Mia is living in her car with her daughter. And her and her daughter, they go into a grocery store to kind of get cleaned up. And after that, they start looking for housing. Now, Elena sees this car in the parking lot, so she calls the authorities to check up on it, and turns out that that was Elena's, I mean Elena, Mia's car in that parking lot. So their stories connect because when Mia finds a place that is suitable for her and that's affordable, it is actually Elena who owns the building. So it's a two-bedroom um Pearl's daughter. Mia's daughter Pearl is extremely excited because she gets to have her own room. There's this nice neighborhood. There's this great school. And she is just like, Mom, please, this is the place we have to stay here. Um, but Mia turns it down because the rent is not month to month. Mia is an artist and she kind of moves wherever she feels her inspiration once the inspiration is gone she moves to another place so because we move around a lot i don't really know if this is going to be the best place for us so elena is just like all right well if you change your mind let me know but then she walks outside she sees the blue car that somebody was living in she recognizes that this is the woman who she saw out in that parking lot in her heart of hearts, she doesn't want a single mother out there living on the streets. So it tugs at her heartstrings and she tells Mia, you know what, we can work out something with the month to month. As long as you cut the grass and it does have to be a certain amount of inches or else, you know, the housing board will be on you and you will be fined. So make sure you cut the grass and she is dead serious. So their stories are instantly connected. All right, I'm looking at my notes. Y'all give me a minute. Now, throughout the episodes, you kind of just see the parallels between the mothers, how Elena is this wonderful, concerned mother. She's concerned about their grades and their schooling and their environment and their temperament. She's just this really warm and portrayed, anyway, as this really warm mother. But she's a little bit, little bit critical, not even a little bit. She's critical of her children, especially if they make decisions that are not the ones that she would make. Um... Mia, on the other hand, is a working single mother, doesn't really have time to be as involved with her daughter as Elena would be with her kids. Um, she is an artist, so kind of gets her money as it comes. So in the meantime, she works at a restaurant, works late hours, and isn't always home to make Pearl a hot meal and do all of those things. So you kind of see the differences in what they do while elena is the life of the party and all of her friends love her mia's a little bit more quiet and demure her co-workers feel like they don't really even know her that well um and i think mia would prefer it that way because throughout the episodes we see her having flashbacks one minute she's on a train and she's laying in the lap of another woman and there's this man looking intently at her um, from across the train and then you see visions of her pregnancy and it's just a bunch of different things going on that she's having flashbacks of and we see this throughout the episode as well episodes um elena only has sex with her husband on thursdays and saturdays which is hilarious <laughs> and mia on the other hand has sex whenever she wants to with whoever she wants to because she feels like her emotions are not tapped into sex she just you can have sex and not what is that tie emotions to it and uh she smokes a little ganja so very different but are they really so let me get to these churn okay let me get to these churn so you've got pearl mia's daughter and even though she's grown up around her mother her entire life she is quite taken with the idea of moving into a better life and a better world, which makes her drawn to Elena, Elena Richardson, who is the woman that they are running their home from, played by Reese Witherspoon. I just want to make sure we're all together. And she's very taken with their life. She's taken with her children and how she raises her children and how she is this good mother and how she has time for her kids and how their house is so big and they're able to go to this really good school and you know they don't have to suffer from poverty in any kind of way and how they've probably all had their own room all their lives and never really had the type of life that she had 
Um, and also the fact that she's a journalist. Pearl is into poetry and writing. So she respects Elena for that. And she's just... She has this extreme amount of admiration for Elena, but also for her children, right? And the lives that, in the I can't talk, the lives that they are living and that they get to live. So we start to see in Pearl this, you know, this kind of image of this um, little girl who has lived a certain kind of life and really, really covets living another life. So it's not that she is envious of them or jealous, but she really would like to have these things for herself and she feels like being in proximity of those things will afford her those things while her mother is trying to teach her the lesson of no 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 you know you don't need to be around these people you're not one of them they don't see you as one of them and what becomes a bigger complication is the relationship that pearl has with moody and i don't mean that they shouldn't be in a relationship i'm talking about the fact that moody is so taken with her and that she spends so much time with moody and um, now she's always at the house of the Richardsons. So Moody, who is Elena's son, has taken a liking to um, Pearl as soon as he sees her. He even buys her a bike, which Mia is not happy about, her mother. And um, they hang out a lot. They read poetry together, watch movies together, and hang out at the house together. You know, they're always together. They go to school and do stuff together. So it's a really sweet and cute relationship. However, we see by the end of episode three that Moody does not seem to be quite enough for Pearl because Pearl, again, she's enamored with a certain kind of life. So while Moody is this very sweet and nice kid, you know, maybe a little bit nerdy and awkward to some, um, and really likes her, Pearl is more interested or becomes interested in his brother okay and what is that brother's name child i forgot but becomes more interested in him because he kind of is like this jockey dude at school not very bright but you know he kind of is more of what pearl is looking at because he's one of the cool kids and that's what pearl would like to be he she even becomes enamored with lexi who is elena's daughter now lexi is a different type of you know you kind of you kind of see the parallels to real life because Lexi is, she's dating this black guy and because she's in proximity to blackness, she feels like she knows a lot about what it is <laughs> to be black and uh, feels like she's a little bit more with it, okay, <laughs> so to speak. And so um, Lexi is one of the popular girls, you know, homecoming queen, prom queen, that type of vibe. But Lexi also has her own stuff going on in the meantime that her mother does not know about. <laughs> um, Lexi and her boyfriend do discuss, you know, giving up the goods, but they're going to wait till prom night. They actually end up doing it before then. And um, she plans to graduate and go to Yale. But before she gets into Yale, she has to write an essay. And the essay has to be something thought-provoking about a challenge that she experienced. And it's here that we learn that Lexi's never experienced any challenges to write about. So instead of writing some type of essay, she takes Pearl's letter that is written to, um, I guess, the principal or the guidance counselor because Pearl wants to be bumped up in her math class because they have her in a class that she is repeating because she came from the inner city. They feel like she might not be on target, so go ahead and take it again. Pearl doesn't need to take it again. Pearl's very smart. And so she writes a letter of intent about how she felt in that experience and what she would like to gain going forward. So Lexi takes that letter, makes the experience her own. Her black boyfriend, who is seemingly woke, okay, again, parallels to real life, right? Um, doesn't appreciate her doing that. And also tries to convince Lexi, I mean, not Lexi, Pearl, you don't have to be friends with her, you know, just to, you know, be cool with the whole thing that she's doing. So that's just a brief overall view of the children. I'm trying to move as quick as I can because I want y'all to watch it so that we can discuss epi episode, I can't talk, episode four in more in depth. All right, so I'll let y'all watch the rest of that. Um, then we have, oh, I already talked about the older son, you know, kind of jockey, picks on the younger brother, all of that, but 
Pearl is going to end up taking a liking to him. Uh, let's see what else. And lastly, we have Izzy. And Izzy, the same way that Pearl is enamored with Elena, Izzy becomes enamored with uh, Mia. And we'll talk about that when I talk about episode four. But Izzy is an artist. Um, it is, is, Izzy is very different from her siblings. Um, Izzy is being laughed at and talked about at school and being called Ellen because Izzy is a lesbian. We learned that by episode three. Um, she tries her best to ward off the rumors, but it's not really authentic to her. She would love to have more interaction with her mother, but her mother, you know, her mother's just not really seeing Izzy for who she is. She's seeing Izzy for who she would like her to be. Much in the same way that Mia doesn't see Pearl for who she is, she sees Pearl for who she would like Pearl to be. And it's interesting because the way that Mia goes about trying to kind of get Pearl to do what she wants her to do is, you know, it, it, it's mean-spirited, I'll say. It is very much, you know, you're mine and you do what I say. While Elena's is kind of like, oh, I'm going to be understanding and I love you and I want to be here for you, but I really would like you to be who I would like you to be and do things how I would like you to do them. So hers is more passive aggressive. I guess Mia's is a little bit more aggressive um, in their parenting style, but they're both kind of doing the same thing. Uh, let's see what else. Now, another story running concurrently with this is the fact that Mia has a Chinese, I think she's Chinese, um, or maybe Malaysian. I don't want to get it wrong, but she um, has a co-worker who's very, very sad and messing up at work. And we come to find out that she was an overwhelmed mother, um, an illegal immigrant, and because she could not feed her baby and get the formula and that all of her utilities were cut off and her and the baby were cold, she dropped the baby off at a fire station in hopes that somebody would take care of her. Well, somebody did. And it was a friend of Elena who ended up adopting this baby. Mia finds out about the baby during a um, one-year-old birthday party that she wanted to take photos for. Reports back to her friend at work. The friend come in there, show out, and say that's her baby. And then um, the chaos ensues from there. So again, just a very brief synopsis of the show. I would like for you guys to watch it so that we can talk about it every week. Um, I'm starting to see a lot of stuff that you know, is going to develop and come forth. Um, you know, when I look at Pearl, I just see so much of a, a child who is really, really ignorant of the ways of the world, but it's understandable because that's part of her innocence. And then when I look at some of the things that Elena's children are going through, I'm seeing a group of people who are very naive to the experiences of other people in the world and just believing that, you know, even though we are very privileged, we still understand, but you kind of, sometimes it's some stuff you won't always 100% understand unless you are 100% in it, but I don't believe they think like that. I think they feel like they can just get it because they are them. So we'll talk about it a little bit more. I will see you guys for episode four where I will be way more in depth. I want to know your thoughts about the first three episodes, so please watch it. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow for my episode four review, all right? I'm going to the bathroom right now. <laughs> Bye.